Memphis Mining makes Bitcoin mining accessible to everyone. Start mining in as little as 48 hours with our turnkey hardware, online and mining directly to your Bitcoin wallet within two business days. Find out more at compassmining.io and get started now. Hey miners, welcome or welcome back to the channel McNally Money, the new home of power mining analysis. In today's episode, Anthony Power and I are pleased to be talking about the green we're seeing in the markets in terms of Bitcoin price and the Bitcoin mining stocks. Shoots of green across the board this morning with most of the miners we cover on the channel having a substantial rebound from Friday's close. So we want to talk about why that is, whether or not we think this is going to be short lived and where we see these stocks going over the next few months. Now before we get into all that, please take a second, smash the like button guys, huge help to myself and the channel, Anthony loves it. If you're not already subscribed, McNally Money, feel free to join. And let us know in the comment section below how you're feeling about the Bitcoin mining stocks right now, if you're still holding, buying, or if you sold, and your outlook for the last few months of 2024. And with that being said, let's get into today's video. Okay guys, that's right, we're back Monday morning. Finally, some green shoots, as you'd say, in the market, Anthony. I opened up my phone or my trading account this morning. Every company I'm holding currently in the green, a breath of relief, really, in the Bitcoin mining sector, as we've been covering day after day, it seems, of difficulty going up, hash price going down, uh, Bitcoin price going down. We just had a very difficult earnings season. We are fortunate enough to have most of the CEOs on the channel talk us through some of the challenges in Q2. Uh, but it appears, Anthony, we may be seeing a rebound at least for now, hey? Yeah, a little bit of a rebound today. Um, needed a bit, but um, just got to keep your eyes open. It's a volatile market at the moment. Yeah, it most definitely is. Uh, volatility is something we talk a lot about on the channel. This is not a market for the weak stomach uh, investors, Anthony, as we've learned many times. Now, the other thing we've learned many times is you're going to see uh, these upward movements and then retracement sometimes feels like two steps forward and one step back. Do you feel based on some of the technical analysis we've seen and some of the price targets, uh, we're going to be able to see all time highs this year, Anthony, or do you feel uh, maybe more sideways consolidation is in store? I mean, it just, just depends where the Bitcoin price is going to finish. So um, Bitcoin prices, you know, it's pulled back last few weeks. Um, I, I don't know. The technical guys are saying it's you know is there might be more downside. So um, I've, I've tend to zoom out a little bit more when these these type of days because um, you just don't know where it's going to go. But I was pleased to see the green today. Um, let's hope it can stay that way. We, I mean, we all the metrics for for Bitcoin have been fine all year. We've got the ETFs. Um, you know that that was a great boost and the amount of. Bitcoin that was purchased by these ETFs was was wasn't anticipated to be that high. It was really really high. We've seen, I say, we've seen a pullback last last few weeks, and um, the miners have followed. There seems to be a lot more correlation now with the Bitcoin price and the miner price than there was maybe four or five months ago, because we were discussing then maybe a decoupling of the price. But now we're seeing uh, a lot more correlation. So Bitcoin price, you know, heading towards fifty six and a half thousand today. So that's up a couple of thousand dollars. And the miners, um, you know, majority sort of seven, eight, nine percent um up in the green. Um, so you know, pleasant, pleasant day for miners. But bear in mind, we we've pulled back considerably in the last in this last couple of months, we've pulled back massively. Yeah, I liked your comment or advice about zooming out there, Anthony, because it is easy to get caught in the day-to-day -day trading. And despite a strong open to the week, uh, we still have a lot of trading hours left before Friday close. Now, speaking of zooming out, we've also brought a couple charts on hash price here. So although we're not at all-time lows or bottoms here post-having, we're definitely close, Anthony, just flirting with those low uh 40s i guess or just north of 40 now hey yeah the 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 hash price index um effectively tells you how much the miners are earning for their hash rate um online and if we just look back these last three days it's been around the 39 dollars per petash per day 
so rising towards 40 today that's with the with the um with the bitcoin price uh, rising so obviously that is very much correlated with the bitcoin price and um, the other thing that can affect um hash price is also the level of reward so if we see um you know uh, an, an additional tick up on 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 that it might be that there's 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 more rewards being provided to miners we've seen a couple of instances transaction fees transaction fees um you know in the and also in the form of um other you know other the the ordinals and and other other types of um transactions that you know we see the artwork going onto the onto these blockchains now and uh, we talked with um Sheldon Bennett from DMG only last week and you know they're going through a process now where they're looking into uh, using this to give people the opportunity to to place their artwork on on the blockchain um and you know it's one of their many revenue um streams or many revenue businesses that they're looking into um but yeah thir $39.40 is is challenging at the moment even for the even for the top miners um so you know there'll be a few miners in and even in the groups that we sort of look at who will be feeling a little bit of this today i mean we talked about one of the miners and we won't name them but they highlighted have to go down to 29 dollars but believe you me at 38 39 that's 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 quite a lot of pain it definitely is. Yeah, we're getting close to kind of those critical levels in terms of operations. Uh, another two graphs we brought here, Anthony, is global hash rate. So the amount of total machines online globally, that one continuing to push all time highs, as well as difficulty. Um, also working, I guess, against the miners here. So we mentioned this last week, but it really does kind of feel like we're we're fighting on all fronts right now. Hey, well, the. <sighs> So the global hash rate is just if you know this this charts for for the last year, so it looks at the last year, but it's also from a seven day moving average as well. So it it's sort of like it, it balances it out over those seven days. So you're not seeing the volatility of a sort of like every every second of action there. So this is a good indicator to say what you know how is the global hash rate doing? If you look where it was this time last year, it was under four hundred. And the seven-day moving average now has reached uh, 700. Um, that's, you know, it's that's 75% um, higher over the past year. Now, what does that mean for mining companies? That means that the difficulty adjustment, which we'll come on to in a second, um, with that amount of miners on the network, it means that, you know, the uh, time to find that, that number um the solution to that number will will be quicker with more miners on the network so when that happens every two weeks the difficulty is adjusted and it becomes harder and what we've seen over this last 12 months is the majority of of adjustments have been um adjusting to make the you know a, a, a network difficulty adjustment to make it harder there's only been a few occasions where it's worked, worked the other way around, and and that's given miners a little bit of respite. But in general terms, it reduces um, effectively reduces the production for each mining company because if there's more mining machines on the network, then the share of the um, the blocks that are produced every day are shared across more mining machines, um, and so that's the simplicity of it. Um, you know what when when we saw china ban uh, bitcoin mining back in i think may 2021 and the hash rate dropped you know literally by 40 50% overnight that was great for the north american european mining companies out there because their their actual production then started to really really rally so some of the miners we covered today like the bit farms the hives the riots the marathons the, even the argo blockchains all benefited in that in that in those early periods um by the fact that china had come off took their machines off the market and so it made it easy and not easy but it made it made the fact that there was less machines sharing the amount of reward per day so uh, we've seen this last year. We've seen that, that graph going literally, you know, one direction, um, and there's no respite. And and 
even though the likes of JP Morgan said in January that they expected post the halving, which occurred on the 19th of April, we'd see 25% come off the um come off the network. Well, if you go back to April, um, it was sort of like 630, 640 at the, at the term at the time of the uh, of the actual ha halving itself, and we're at 700 now. So there's been no respite at all. Um, apart from, say, a couple of periods, it's generally um, it generally meant uh, less production for mining companies when this adjustment's happened. Yeah, it certainly does. JP Morgan uh, getting one of their numbers in the mining space wrong. We talk about how difficult it is to value this space, Anthony, or make predictions forward looking. And that's a great example of one that was just uh, completely wrong, uh, basically. For, for and, and they weren't, to be honest with you, Bryce, they weren't the only ones. There's many, many um, analysts out there, um, you know, because it, it sort of, the theory of it absolutely makes sense. You know, the halving literally is, you know, you're only going to get half the reward. It's going to cost you the, the same amount of energy to mine uh, for half the rewards. So, you know, when you're losing half your revenues, uh, those mi mining companies that don't have the most efficient fleets or are paying a little bit more for their energy, uh, you'd expect them to think about how, how long they're going to stay on the network. Now, um, we've talked before about, you know, a lot of the miners that we cover have been going out there and buying all the latest, uh, most efficient mining machines. And we've seen a few of the miners who've been able to tap into some of the, the cheapest energy. We've seen the likes of Saluna Holdings. Um, you know, they they articulate they're around about the three cents a kilowatt hour, um, which is comparable with the likes of Cypher Mining. Not much more than that. You've got Terra Wolf. Um, Iron's just updated its uh, August uh, cost, and that was around just over three cents a, a kilowatt hour. So we've got, you know, we've got miners out there who, who, are, who are attracting cheap energy. Most of the big miners who are growing their hash rate to, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 X hash, even by the end of this year, are getting the most efficient mining machines. So that will help them. So if you get a, an S21 Pro replacing an S19, you're going to be able to mine Bitcoin at half the price with your new machine than you were with the S19 or more than half the price, uh, more less than half the price. So that's what the miners, some of the big miners have been doing. But then again, you've got, you know, quite a few miners that haven't been able to sort of um, this year uh, change their, their fleet so they're still having you know an older fleet so they're having to come up with other ideas and some of them have been adopting uh, an underclocking system whereby you're not um you know utilizing each miner its maximum capacity or or even overclocking the 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 miner when you when it, when you can but you can underclock the miner and in a number of instances we've had reports back that saying that they're actually getting a better return from underclocking so not to be uh, dismissed at all uh, we know the likes of core scientific have used this we know the likes of hut have used this the likes of hive digital announced in their latest update they yeah. were able to bring their efficiency uh, their fleet efficiency down from 24.5 to 23 by actually underclocking some of their older mining machines so Getting and a better I think, efficiency. Anthony, those were the two variables that they, the JP Morgan and ourselves, we were expecting a fall off as well, didn't really factor in was number one, how rapidly the technology cycle or upgrade cycle for mm. miners would be. Uh, I know personally, I was not expecting anywhere in the 13, 14 joules this year. And then this underclocking phenomenon, which you're exactly right, allows uh, miners to really extend the situation or circumstances where these miners are are uh, cost effective. So again, uh, the point being, you guys, it's so difficult to estimate or forecast this space. And that's obviously why the HPC revenues and all the rest are so critical. Now, Anthony, uh, we also wanted to just quickly talk about difficulty. You mentioned Saluna as well, having a very cost effective power rate in there. They came out with a news release today. So I wanted to get into that as well. Any final thoughts on difficulty itself? Yeah, so as I say, the, the difficulty has been increasing with regularity over the last over the last twelve months. I and mean, we've seen the global hash rate go from four hundred up to seven hundred, and therefore the the global difficulty, which will actually track the global hash rate, um, has also increased. And so at the moment, um, we're anticipating um, a new um, difficulty 
adjustment tomorrow um and the expectations at the moment now this can change between now and tomorrow there's a lot quite a lot of volatility the closer you get to the, the actual the hour of change but at the moment it's forecast to go at 4.53 percent now in basic terms to mining companies that that 4.53 is effectively 4.53 of your production so if you're not growing any ash rate and you mined say 100 bitcoin at the end of july or end of August, sorry, uh, you know, in September, with that adjustment there, that impacts using a very simplistic, you know, you'd, you'd be getting sort of like 96 Bitcoin instead of 100 Bitcoin with the same fleet because, you know, your difficulty now has, has affected your production. So, you're, you're, you know, there's more machines on the network. The share goes out to all those machines. You're going to get less Bitcoin. And that's been happening, like, you know, for the majority of every time we've had an adjustment this year, I would say probably... Uh, you know, eighty percent plus of all the adjustments this year have been have been making it more more challenging for miners in in terms of they're going to produce less Bitcoin. Compass Mining is your trusted partner in Bitcoin mining. Whether you're investing in one machine or thousands, our customizable solutions are tailored to meet your needs. We are your experts in Bitcoin mining, offering a platform where individuals and businesses can purchase hardware, host machines, and access a range of ancillary Bitcoin mining services. We also specialize in large-scale site development and data center operations. Discover more at compassmining.io and see how we can power your success today. Yeah, it's just incredible. I'm running the numbers here, Anthony. If you factor 450 Bitcoin a day times $50,000 Bitcoin in that neighborhood, it's $22.5 million a day globally of value being created. And if you think about how much money in terms of CapEx is invested in these facilities, these uh, rigs, the immersion tanks, the electricity, the staff, it's just incredible the amount of activity and computing power that's competing for this, especially as you start to extrapolate this out down the road. And that's exactly why our thesis was we're gonna start to see a lot of M&A and big uh, mining conglomerates that basically have economies of scale. So it'll be interesting to see if that continues that we've, um, we, we, yeah, we've we've seen we've seen the we, when we talk about you know the difficulty at the moment we're, we're talking about miners just being able to meet the cash costs. Yeah, we're not talking about miners. You know, the money they have to raise to buy, you know, purchase these new miners, purchase these facilities. You know, that's that cost really is the depreciation cost, which we're excluding at the moment just to see if they can sort of like break even. That way there once you start putting the depreciation which is a true reflection of those costs incurred by building these facilities getting these new mining machines in there um you know the payback on those um it the, the price the bitcoin price at the moment is the other variable so you know you have cost of power fleet efficiency and the bitcoin price are the three um uh variables that are, that, are, that are providing you know challenges to 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 miners and you know the bitcoin price hasn't isn't hasn't been correlated to the difficulty or the global hash rate um yes we've seen it spike in march it went up to 73 74000 and again sort of got close to 70000 back in june but we've sort of seen it um you know pull back now and um, you know, we need to get uh, Freedom or, or one of our technical people to come on the channel soon and just give us a a, a review of where we are on the technical analysis um, and <laughs> give us some sure sort of like, uh, you know, green shoots to, to, to look forward to. But um, as I say, I do I do follow uh, Freedom and, um, he, he you know, he's he's sort of like he's he's comfortable where things are at the moment. He, he thinks that, you know, we're going to have a have a have a have a have a turn soon um, as long as we meet certain criteria in the short term we should see a, a you know a potential move up but um as i say a lot of analysts have been saying this move up upwards is imminent and i just don't know that period of how long they think imminent yeah. is compared to how long i feel imminent is how oh, imminent two is different imminent. time zones uh, <laughs> yeah freedom better Better start producing. I'm paying 12 bucks a month, Anthony, for those uh, stock <laughs> tips on there. That's the other thing. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, Bitcoin is currently at 56,598. I wanted to quickly take a look at the minor moves today, Anthony, before we get into Saluna. So I'll throw up uh, the 
um, watch list on the screen here, you guys. Pretty much green across the board, Anthony, from what I can see. Interestingly enough, Saluna is the only one I see in the red right now. A lot of miners really in that 7 to 10% range. Are you seeing any correlation between the peer plays versus uh, non-peer play HPC miners? It looks to me pretty much a rising tide is lifting just a rise yeah just a rise in the in, in miners today i don't think there's anything stand out ish in fact uh, earlier today the the miners that um were at the bottom of the those that were you know advancing were, were, were uh claws actually were, hadn't increased by by much i think it was about about four or five percent now but at the start of the day it hadn't really in, in, increased and some of these miners were sort of eight nine percent up um pre pre-market um, Saloon is the only one down, interestingly, from the ones that we look at. And um, I, I'm surprised because they've, they've made an announcement today. Yeah, I wanted to get into that announcement. Quick shout out to HUD-8 as well. I see they're the only one in double digits right now. But uh, yeah, I've got the announcement up on the screen here, Anthony. We can walk through essentially uh, some new financing available that's going to help the Saluna Cloud or their AI division. We've talked to John extensively about the opportunities he sees with some of the HPC. Uh, they've got behind the meter access to extremely competitive power rates, all through renewable facilities and partnerships. They work on a project level financing uh, model. So very interesting news today, Anthony. And like you say, a little bit surprised to see them in the red actually. Yeah, they've announced um, that they've got a standby equity purchase agreement for 25 million with Yorkville Advisors. And this financing will enable um, them to, to start funding their critical um, AI operations and also improve um, cash flow. Um, they're gonna uh, retire some of the convertible notes. So this will give an opportunity to strengthen, effectively strengthen the balance sheet because if, you know they won't be paying interest. There is a, I think there's, it looks like there's a $700,000 um, cost of this so the 25 million will be split into two tranches one of 10 one of 15 on the first um 10 million um that the the, the the net is um i think it's 9.3 uh 9.3 million um and that again is uh, that 9.3 million is broken into two tranches uh 70 percent um when both you know the parties have, have, have consented and, and they've they've met the criteria and then 30 percent uh upon the effectiveness of the s1 registration for filing um so there's a couple of um uh, hurdles to get through to, to to utilize this money but it's a it's a it's a you know it in this in this day at the moment um you know raising capital or having available capital um, there's not many op opportunities for mining companies. This looks like it's a positive opportunity for Saluna to to have that cash flow when they need it, especially as they're now moving into the AI space. They've got their model um, up and running, their two megawatt build out um, um, near Project Dorothy, and then they've got you know they've got they've got this new project, Project Catty, which is 166 megawatts. Um, and so, you know, the, this this agreement will, you know, provide some sort of flexibility, and and it's just another, you know, another way of, you know, Saluna slowly but surely um, growing um, as a small miner. And we've had this discussion many times um, throughout this year as to how some of these smaller miners, those miners that with a market capitalization less than a hundred million, how they're going to, um, you know, be able to grow. And I think what Saluna are doing um, has been very positive this year. They they don't go out big bang. They create these smaller projects. And when you say smaller projects, some of them can be like $30, $35 million projects. They try and secure the capital for that. And then they use the capital, get the projects off the ground. And then there's some sort of a revenue share once the project's up and running. And they've got, um, as I say, they've got their self-mining business, they've got their hosting business, then they've got these other projects like Dorothy, like Catty, like the AI project that they're developing at the moment. So um, Saluna look like they've got a nice little model. And the key thing about Saluna is the access to power is literally one of the cheapest um, of all the mining companies. They've got uh, potentially a pipeline of, you know, two gigawatts of power 
and they're currently paying around about three cents a kilowatt hour. So when you're paying three cents a kilowatt hour, it enables you to do so much more um, in terms of whatever business you do in the Bitcoin mining space or the AI space, because power is, you know, is a, is a big requirement for both those type of businesses. They also have a very uh, successful hosting business. And you can appreciate if you're only paying three cents a kilowatt hour for your, for your power, um, it means you can you can attach that an attractive margin, um, you know, to cover yourselves for the hosting. So that's another great thing to think about. I mean, um, you know, if you're paying five cents a kilowatt hour and then trying to get a margin on top of that, and we know with the hash price at the moment, it, you know, margins are being cut, you know, thinner and thinner. Um, I'd rather be a mining company that has that sort of level of cheap power. Um, to be able to to be able to to deal with that and you know you're used in custom machines so it's not like you're having to worry about their fleet efficiency they're paying you to manage you know their machines in your facilities and you get your margin and they get um you know what's agreed in the contract in terms of you know a revenue uh from 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 that hosting uh deal so with that type of um power price it's sort of like a win-win for both parties so um, I like the way they come out with regularity. These these projects are coming out sort of every few months now. So we'll hopefully see the project Catty one, the 166 megawatts, um, see something coming along the lines for that one there, because that's that's probably their biggest project um, of the future at the moment. And the 166 megawatts, I mean, just to put that into context, um, the likes of Hive Digital are using about 142 megawatts for their five and a half exahash. So that's that's no sh small size of power um, for a company of Saluna size at the moment. That's a big project to 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 work through, and um, that'll be interesting to see when that comes off the ground. But John's been very positive. We've had John on the show four or five times this year, and um, I always look forward to him coming on. He's extremely uh, knowledgeable in the space he comes from a tech background um and he's you know he's been in the job just over 12 months and you know he's not he's judged me on what i've done and and who can who can you know judge him any other than anything that he's done good for the company yeah you're exactly right anthony and and i liked your point the three cent power low cost power it just opens up so many potential doors hosting being one of those and hosting when we started doing this podcast anthony was really not as favorable when we were on that december run in book uh bitcoin price but now the tables have sure turned and you're right it is a lot more uh consistent i also thought this was interesting in the notes i saw from john here there's no warrants there's no interest rate no. um it's essentially a, that fee uh you talked the about the fee the, yeah which, which, which is a, you know it's a, it's a seven hundred thousand fee on that loan so you know it's a, it's there's a bit of a return that's on the ten thousand. so if you you could argue um that's like a seven seven percent yeah yeah interesting good to see money flowing into the company uh anthony also good to see money flowing into our trading accounts with the green open this week let's hope it holds for monday and through the rest of the week uh, we've got a lot going on sebastian's going to be joining us on wednesday so we talk about a technical analyst uh, not necessarily, but he can help us out with some price targets, question and answer session. So we're going to be running a long one on Wednesday, regular time, 10 a.m. Uh, we've also got some updates on the website that we wanted to walk through this week as well, Anthony. So no shortage of news. Uh, make sure you guys smash the like button if you're making money today in the markets. Feel free to subscribe. That's all for now. We'll see you here tomorrow.